What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are about to take the Q50 out on the first drive after the installation of the BC Racing coilovers. We gotta back out of the garage and there's people walking by me. Hold tight. So I could tell that the, the rear was just slightly lower than the front, so I'm definitely gonna have to adjust ride height, but I think we're right in the right region, actually, which is a little bit surprising. I didn't really know what to expect uh, in terms of dropping the car down. Uh, I actually like the height of the rear, uh, so I might bring the front down a bit further uh, just to see just to see what that looks like, but also if there's any rubbing. And of course, um, things might have to be adjusted further once we get the new wheels in. But I'm interested to kind of get my first impressions here with the coilovers installed. Just driving through the neighborhood, I can tell that they're a little bit stiffer than the uh, Tane Aztec lowering springs were. I can feel some of the little cracks and grooves in the road. Uh, they're, I don't wanna say they're harsh, we're just going 15, 20 mile an hour here in the neighborhood, but uh, they're a bit more, there's a bit more of a shock when you hit them. To be expected. But it doesn't feel bad, it doesn't feel like we're like, you know, driving on leaf springs or something crazy like that or you know really stiff it feels okay but now we're here out on the normal road let's let's uh see how this goes doesn't feel all that bad to be quite honest left the back seat out of course like I said in the video, I just like to keep everything sort of disassembled or partially reassembled just in case there's anything that I have to change or uh, as I kind of go through things in my mind, make sure there's nothing that I forgot. And if I do recall something or there's a rattle here or there or something pops up that I need to make an adjustment on or fix, uh, at least I don't have to disassemble everything again. Speaking of weird noises, I'm not getting any weird clunks or clanks or anything. <laughs> I really didn't know what to expect there either. I've always heard that the BC coilovers are a little bit closer to factory ride quality and you don't, it, the ride isn't as harsh as a, a normal coilover. I've had coilovers in the past, I don't even remember what the brand they were. I had purchased a car with coilovers already installed. It was a pretty harsh ride, uh, but I really wasn't beating on that car at the time. These definitely feel, uh, 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 I don't want to say soft, because you can definitely tell that the ride uh, it has a little bit more rigidity to it. Uh, but they don't feel bad at all. I, actually, not a whole lot different than stock suspension, to, to be quite honest. I'm not on the interstate, but these are some of the rougher, you know, neighborhood roads that we're riding on right now. The Tain Estec springs that I was running before, I always said that they were very, very close to the factory feel in terms of you know, ride quality. Uh, just slightly stiffer, uh, a slightly more rigid ride. And I would say that these BC coilovers are slightly more rigid than the Tain Estec springs. So it's like we had a little tear, you know, factory ride quality up here, Tain Estec, BC racing. Not bad, not bad by any means. Um, I would say if you went from the factory suspension and put these coilovers on, now granted I haven't done any dampening adjustments or uh, you know ride height adjustments right now or anything, uh, so we're just riding right out of the box, um, but I would say if you went from the factory suspension to these BC coilovers, uh, you would definitely feel a difference and it, would, it wouldn't be a traumatic or dramatic difference, it would just, you know, it's very noticeable. Uh, but going from the Tain Aztec Springs to these, the difference really isn't all that much. The real question is whether or not this car is going to handle very well uh, in a, an aggressive driving situation on a tr in a track scenario. We know that we sort of were reaching the limitations of the Tain uh, Aztec lowering springs when we were on our Tale of the Dragon trip. Uh, they handled really well and they stood up to the abuse very, very well. Uh, but when we really started to push a little bit harder into some of the curves, I could feel uh, we were just getting a little bit too much squish. 
around some of the corners. You know, we were sinking in just a little bit too much. Let's try some flex here. That is tight. It's not touching, but it's definitely tight and tucked. Front at full lock. Not touching, but definitely tight. Uh, it looks like we did rub a little. At some point, this is the, just going around the block. Might be a little too low. So it's the next day, we had to pick this video up again, the camera died and then we got busy with some other projects. But nonetheless, the where I left off was sort of talking about the performance of these coilovers in terms of a, an aggressive driving scenario, particularly on an autocross track or a road course. Uh, I've heard that BC Racing is a, a good, solid quality coilover for a daily driver that you track occasionally. Uh, but the, some of the other feedback that I'm getting from like real time, uh, real user information is that if you're if you're beyond a novice uh, driver on the track, uh, you know after your first two three events when you're really comfortable with your car, uh, going at those rates of speeds, taking corners and and you know work driving with other drivers, that BC coilovers are not necessarily the best. Um, there's there's a limitation to them. So I, I'm a I'm a little. I don't know. I, I, I'm happy with the purchase so far. Um, driving around, it's definitely a comfortable ride, and I know we have a lot of adjustment left in terms of dampening, so we can make it a, a stiffer ride if necessary. Um, I'm a little low right now, I think, for uh, what I need to be at for just a, a typical uh, daily driver, just encountering speed bumps and driveways and, and different elevations and, and things like that. So uh, I'm going to have to make a, a slight adjustment from where I even adjusted uh, last night. You know, we'll, we'll find out how, how the BC coilovers perform on the track and whether or not that was a good decision or not. But I know, like I said, there's some adjustability and if we need to stiffen them up a little bit, we can, uh, which is good. But you know we want we want uh, we want an overall you know good performing car, and I guess that's the priority. And if that's um, you know if that means we have a really nice daily driver with coilovers with some adjustability, uh, and we can we can take a track at at moderate speeds, not necessarily push it to the limits of the car. You know that's fine. Like I said before, this is predominantly a daily driver at this point until we get another. A project car and whether that car becomes more of a daily or if that becomes more of a track inspired uh, project you know we'll see but for now I, I think these are good we are sitting pretty low this is this is level ground and I can can only get up to just past my fingernails in there so pretty tight but no evidence of rubbing rubbing in the rear as far as I can tell front looks pretty low as well but you can definitely tell there's yeah I mean it's it's up in the wheel well but you can tell there's some negative camber in there so uh, adjustable control arms are definitely gonna have to be on the list doesn't look like we had any rubbing while on the road which is good but I think I could feel it um, you know coming out of the driveway we'll have to get under the car and inspect and see if there's any shiny spots to see if we actually did rub but I mean fitments on point in the rears uh, nice and flush too in the front with the with the wheel but the tire is definitely tucked in which I which is good you know that's the there's gonna be more chance of the fronts rubbing than the rear because the rears are just gonna tuck right up into the wheel well um, but obviously we turn the front wheel so there's a, a higher likelihood of rubbing in the front so uh, it's okay to have a little negative camber and a slightly stretched tire to fit up in there. Yeah, ride height is actually good. I typically like a tiny, tiny bit of rake uh, in the rear, you know, slightly higher in the rear than in the front. Um, the measurements tell me that the front is about a quarter of an inch higher than the rear, but I think how it stands is actually pretty nice. I may have to keep it like this. We'll see what the fitment's like with the new wheels, but uh, this looks good. 
Well guys, first drive, first impressions with the BC Racing coilovers. Um, pretty good, pretty good, pretty pleased. The car definitely feels nimble, definitely feels stiff. I can definitely tell that we changed out the suspension. Rides a little bit different than the Tain coil, uh, S-Tech lowering springs, but it's not rigid, it's not uh, you know, jarring or teeth rattling or anything. It feels comfortable. Um, and uh, that's nice. That's what we're going for. We want a car that's comfortable to, to drive on a daily basis, um, but one that can still handle a little abuse in the mountains and on the track. Uh, my ride height right now looks really good. I'm not sure if it's practical. Um, even if it's not, even if we do want to raise it up, it would only be, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch or so. Nothing too dramatic. Uh, so I think where we're at is pretty good. And I may just mess with the dampening settings a little bit. Uh, if uh, we're this slow, maybe we just want it a bit more stiff. And that will resolve some of the issues with sort of the over flexing or uh, potentially rubbing when it's really, you know, all the way bottomed out. Uh, if we can stiffen it up a little bit, we might not get to that point, which is which is good. Uh, the other thing to think about too is that I very, very rarely have anyone riding in the back seat of this car. I'm not too concerned about bottoming bottoming out having while having people in the back end, but we might have to just be prepared for that. Uh, we obviously don't want the ride to be super harsh for them, uh, but we also don't want to be rubbing and scraping and having issues driving if we have passengers. If we have passengers. So just a couple of things to think about. Overall, totally pleased. Installation was relatively simple, especially having some experience installing low ring springs on this car in the past. It was pretty straightforward, uh, pretty simple. Only a few bolts and nuts to break loose. Uh, impact tool can be helpful. Otherwise, if you've got a breaker bar, it's really all you need. Uh, and a torque wrench is handy as well. But we're good, guys. Stick around. Time to go uh, install the big brakes. Yeah.